Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked here on the channel. This is the series where I'm reviewing every single book on my shelves because what else does one do in a crisis? Today I am reviewing Neil and Jared Schusterman's Dry. <laughs> Some quick disclaimers before we start. I'm pretty sure I bought this book myself. I don't really remember, but I'm fairly sure that was what happened. Regardless of where books come from, nobody's paying me to talk about books and all opinions are my own. I'm gonna keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible if you do want to go into this book knowing absolutely nothing in particular. If you want to know absolutely nothing about whether there is or isn't romance in this book, pause the video, go read it come back we'll talk about it then. And I will link the story graph for this book below. I would recommend checking out the content warnings for this. It's not, it's still YA but it gets a little bit grisly at times. This is a YA sci-fi in that sense that sci-fi covers a lot of boxes. Uh, thriller, apocalyptic, what else is in here? Suspense, dystopian, arguably that kind of book. And it originally came out in 2018, I think in October. Yes, I can remember my notes that I read three seconds ago. Neil Schusterman, we talked about last week, wrote the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. I'm pretty sure Jared Schusterman is his brother. So in this book, we are in uh, California, I believe, or at very least the West Coast of America. And the tap out has happened. Essentially all the taps stop running. There has been a, a cutoff at one of the last remaining uh, water access points and nobody has any water and this happens very suddenly and with pretty much no warning. And the early parts of this book are following characters, mostly teenagers, in fact all teenagers, in the very early parts of the disaster where it's sort of that everything might be okay and definitely someone's gonna step in to help us sometime soon and we've just got to get through this first week and then everything will be fine and then gradually we go into things have gone a bit more wrong, nobody's helping, what's going Going to happen now. Water is quite important to life, isn't it? Not necessarily a dystopian novel in the sense of we are living in a future world. It feels very imminent and it is also very much the story of the very start of a disaster that uh, definitely could have been avoided. Let's fight climate change. But yeah, we're in that, that crisis point of the story. This book is incredibly stressful and I mean that in the best way. The climate crisis is real. There's a reason I'm using the word crisis. It's a terrible thing. And I think this book really captures the uh, energy and the emotion and the catastrophe that comes with this kind of climate crisis. And I think the fact that these are very typical teenagers, there's a lot of tropiness to the various characters, um, but they, they do feel very real people. That all makes it feel like it's definitely a disaster that could happen. And that's because because it is one. And obviously I don't want to downplay the fact that that disaster is happening. Droughts are happening in places. People do not have access to water. This is very much a and it could happen to you kind of story. I think that the Schustermans definitely capture the real stress of that situation. I find it a very anxiety inducing book but again in that way that really ignites you to want to make change rather than a I am despairing right now this is terrible. But there are moments in the story where your heart just breaks where it almost feels like everything's going to go right and then it goes wrong again. There are just some fantastically tense moments in this story. I'm very glad that I read it during an incredibly rainy week here in England because I think had I been reading it somewhere very hot or somewhere that was experiencing a drought I would have got even more stressed out. What is my hair doing today? Another element I really enjoyed in this story, similar to Ark of a Scythe, I really like what I assume is primarily Neil Schusterman's way of envisioning how a world that has this fundamental change from our current world would function. How would people react to the water suddenly running out? and kind of taking different elements of uh, the world and looking at how they would function. What well-meaning but ultimately failing contingency plans would be put in place? What would happen to people stuck on a highway? Where would people get trapped? Where would the bottlenecks be? And kind of viewing that world in a very holistic manner I guess. I don't know if that's the right word. Looking at the whole of the thing um, and you, while you see that through these very specific characters eyes and through their specific journey you still get a sense that they've thought very broadly about what this world is like. And I appreciate that. I think it's really interesting and it's probably my favorite thing about the book. There are some teenage characters in this who do not suck. Teenage characters in an apocalypse scenario who don't suck. And I think part of that is because we do have that um, ramping up of difficulty and ramping up of tension and ramping up of, what's the word I'm looking for? The reality of the situation sinking in on these characters. We get that like slightly slow start. So when these teen characters are suddenly uh, I suppose not suddenly being expected to shoulder this burden and do this thing and go off on this adventure of sorts or quest, you do definitely get the sense of 
this is something that they have to do. This isn't teenagers because this is a YA book. This is teenagers because they are in this situation. There are some really likeable characters. There are some truly dislikable characters, but written in a very good way, I think, with the exception of one that I'll come on to in a bit. I just thought these characters were well considered and interesting people to be experiencing the story and to have to come together. My first con, therefore, is that some of the teenage characters do suck and yet are somehow still the protagonist. And I don't mean that in a kind of anti-hero way. I think I just mean that in a... Neil Schusterman has a way of writing characters that I think he thinks you're going to come round to, and I, as a person living in 2023, never came round to them. There are some things you do that are just creepy, and I can't forgive you for them, even if the character in the book forgives them for that. I'm not going to come around to your opinion. I don't want to talk about it. I don't think you have yet done the work to make me, as a reader, forgive you for this. Goodbye. And that's something that we see in Ark of Scythe as well. I think possibly because this is such a uh, bigger, more difficult scenario for characters to be in, it's slightly more understandable, but at the same time I didn't love some of the characters that the book was expecting me to at least like. I think part of that is because, uh, much again like Ark of a Scythe, there is this romance in there that just doesn't need to be there. And it's a complicated romance and in some ways I can see them trying to write around that difficulty and trying to make it clear that this is complicated and messy and not necessarily something that the characters are super into all the time. But it still just felt like something that could have been left out. Like we didn't need it there and I don't know that it added to the story or to the characters and it just sort of made me go, eh, uh, and that's disappointing when a book is not very long. I think this is 300 and something pages, just shy of 400 pages, but it's it's big font and it's not a long book. For so much of that time to be taken up with this emotional aspect that I wasn't interested in, I wanted to see more of the world, it was just a little bit of a bummer. I think if you're looking for a story that does do that big view of the world during this apocalypse scenario and you want to see how everything gets worked out and you want to hear what the government policy has been and so such, this isn't a book for you. It's very much doing that YA dystopian thing of this is where these characters are in that scenario. If you want to learn more, you'll have to imagine it for yourself. So if you want that big picture, you're not necessarily going to get it, except through the bits we see through these characters' eyes. I'm sure there are books out there that explore a drought from all of those angles. My guess is they are slightly non-fiction leaning, but that is not this book. This is the story of these characters. It just happens to also show you aspects of the world. If you wanted to explore this kind of interesting way of world building and you're okay with that slightly iffy romance, I do think you could read Scythe, Neil Schusterman's other series, if you haven't already read that. They're not super similar, but you can very much tell that the same person wrote both things. If you did want a book that looks at all the different angles of an apocalypse, in this instance a zombie apocalypse. I actually really recommend World War Z, which is a weird thing to say in an English accent. It is uh, look at the zombie apocalypse, but it's set as a series of interviews after the fact, and I read it probably about seven or eight years ago and really enjoyed it. I haven't read it since, so I can't comment on whether it's stayed that far up in my estimations, but it is a really interesting way of looking at an apocalypse. I don't know, maybe disaster novel would have been the better word to use for the entirety of this review. I'm trying to think if I can think of any other disaster novels I've read, but not really. I tend to shy away from them because I'm not very good at dealing with high stress situations that are contained in this small of a package. I want a high stress situation spread out over 800 pages, please and thank you, so I can experience a lot of build up. So should you read this? My feeling personally is Maybe if it's a topic that's interesting to you. I think it's a great book for starting conversations around the climate crisis. I think it's a really interesting story. I think there are probably other things I would supplement it with to add in other perspectives in there, because this is obviously a very narrow perspective of the climate crisis and the consequences of that. But that doesn't mean I don't think it's interesting. I think it would pose a lot of good questions. Uh, I think as an, a mainly adult sci-fi fantasy reader, it's not everything I want it to be, and I can probably find what this book does elsewhere. I just haven't found it yet. Have you read this? Do you have plans to? Do you have any other climate crisis-esque books that you would recommend or that you really want to read, let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media. Come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the ghosts who haunt me over on Patreon. They support the channel and in return get early access to videos, bonus content, live streams, and more. If you'd like to join their number, that's linked in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's kind of piece of bloopers now. And the early parts of the book are following characters in the very early parts of this, parts of this disaster.